Hey guys, welcome back to Triple L Rustic Designs. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the process of building this $7,000 red cedar epoxy table. Stick around and watch how I do it. So this project began with this big red cedar slab that's full of voids. And if this cedar slab looks familiar to you guys, that's because it's from one of our most viewed videos on this channel from two years ago. In that video, Dad and I took the biggest and craziest looking log in the log yard and put it up on the sawmill and ended up finding all kinds of hidden surprises and beautiful slabs inside. This video is up to 7.2 million views, and if you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description below this video. So the first step in prepping this slab for the epoxy pour is we have to dig out all these voids. And to do that, I'm going to be using an air compressor and a wire brush. This red cedar is kind of a soft wood to begin with, so I just take the nozzle of my air compressor and shove it down into all those voids, blasting out all the loose debris. For any of those stubborn areas, I'm using a wire brush attachment on a drill and I'm just working my way around grinding out any of the loose debris from those voids. These eastern red cedar logs always produce such beautiful wood inside, but it's such a shame that when they get big like this, they often get voids all throughout the log. So it's hard to find big, wide eastern red cedar slabs that don't have voids on the inside like this. Some people would see this as a trash slab, but if you're into epoxy, this is actually perfect because you can fill all those voids with epoxy. Our goal is to remove all the loose debris so that the epoxy binds to the healthy parts of the wood. You don't want your epoxy binding to some of this loose debris and then it separating from the wood, causing a crack in your epoxy. Now we do have plans to use black metallic pigment in the epoxy for this pour, so we don't need to get too crazy with it. We just need to ensure that most of the loose debris is removed from the voids. Now that we have our slab prepped, we put it into our big table mold. I actually built this mold myself out of pieces of HDPE. I have a full video on the channel if you're interested in checking that out. The way I designed the mold is the overall dimensions are eight foot long by four foot wide. As you can see though, I use that middle partition piece there and I can move it in or out to adjust the width of my table. I can also do the same thing on one of the ends to adjust the length of the table. This is a reusable mold and it's really nice to have this so I don't have to build and take apart a epoxy mold every single time I wanna do a big build like this. What we're planning to do is pour a thin layer of epoxy all around the mold so that it seals up the bottom of the mold. To do this, we are using the Super Clear Liquid Glass Deep Pour 24. This is a great product from Super Clear. It's a deep pour epoxy, but you can't go over one inch, and it cures in about 24 hours. So this is perfect for creating those thin layers on the bottom of projects, just to lock in and make sure that you seal all the edges. We do apply silicone to all the corners of this mold, but sometimes you can still blow a leak. So I'd rather have a little bit of epoxy leak onto the floor than to go ahead and pour 15 gallons of epoxy in here, blow a leak and lose all that epoxy. So that is why we do the thin lock-in layer pour first and we've been having great results by doing this in all of our projects. After spending about 10 minutes thoroughly mixing our epoxy, we're gonna go ahead and add our black metallic pigment. After adding the pigment, we're just going to make sure that that's thoroughly mixed into the epoxy and then we can get ready to pour our first thin lock-in layer. For the first layer, we're using exactly three gallons of that super clear liquid glass deep pour 24. We're just going to work our way around the mold, making sure we have a nice even layer of epoxy all on the bottom of the mold so that it seals the edges. After waiting 24 hours, we came back and we sanded that first layer of epoxy with some 220 grit sandpaper and then we mixed up some super clear liquid glass. This is the 2 to 4 inch deep pour epoxy. So we mixed up 3 gallons of that and added in our black metallic pigment and then went ahead and poured that on top of that first layer. We did quickly realize that this barely added any epoxy to this project and that we were gonna need a lot more. So we went over and grabbed another three gallon kit of the super clear liquid glass, mixed that up and added that to the project as well. If you've been keeping track, you know that we are now at nine gallons of epoxy into this table. So we're gonna let this sit overnight and come back tomorrow when it's tacky to add some more epoxy. 
After coming back the next day, we added another seven and a half gallons of that super clear liquid glass, bringing our total epoxy for this table up to 16 and a half gallons. For those of you that know anything about epoxy, you know that super clear is one of the best epoxy brands on the market, but with that, it is one of the most expensive. So all in all, this 16 and a half gallons of epoxy cost roughly $1,650. So that's a lot of money invested into this table, and that's definitely going to play a big role in the final pricing of this table when it's finished. After letting this project sit in the mold for approximately seven days, I came back and it's time to take it out of the mold. The way I designed this mold is all the sidewalls can be unscrewed and removed, making easy access to the project. But being that I did not utilize the full width of the mold, I'm able to just get underneath one side of the table and lift it up and get it out of the mold with the help of my father. With the 16 and a half gallons of epoxy and the weight of the red cedar slab, this table is weighing right around 225 pounds right now, but it is going to lose some weight here in a second when we take it outside to the slab flattening table, which is where we're heading to next. So this is the Woodmiser MB200 Slab Miser. This is a slab flattening table, and it basically has a 5-inch cutting head that you drive back and forth flattening slabs or epoxy tables just like this. This slab miser has been an absolute game changer for our operations since we do have a sawmill and create our own slabs and then we dry those slabs in our Nile kiln. Well, when those slabs come out of the kiln, sometimes they can be pretty jacked up. Like they get warped and cracked and twisted. So we invested in this slab miser so that we can flatten those slabs. We also knew that we were gonna get into making epoxy tables just like this and that this is an invaluable tool when it comes to flattening those type of tables. So as you can see, I'm just working my way up and down the table with the slab miser, flattening all the high spots, slowly working my way down until the entire table is flat on both sides. Now that our table is nice and flat, we're gonna take it back inside the shop and mix up some super clear tabletop epoxy. Then we're just gonna work our way around the slab touching up any of those small little air pockets or little voids that were exposed during the flattening. There is a little bit more voids that expose themselves during the flattening just because of the nature of this slab, but it's just tedious work. You work your way around filling all those little tiny voids because we want to have a nice flat surface before we start sanding. Now we usually love using our surf prep sander, but for big table projects like these, we did invest in a Festool six inch Rotex so that makes quick work of sanding a big eight foot table like this. Since I know you guys don't wanna watch me sand this entire table through the whole process, I'm just gonna tell you the steps that I took. I started with 80 grit and I worked my way up to 320 grit, slowly sanding the entire table, making sure that I hit everything evenly. Now I knew I wanted to try the Blacktail Studio signature chamfered edge on this table. So I whipped out our Festool TS75 track saw with the track I dropped the saw to that 45 degree angle and I started to make my cut. What I did not plan for was that since this table is sitting at about two and three quarter inch thick, when I dropped the saw to that 45 degree angle and maxed out the depth of cut, I missed the full cut by about an eighth inch. So when I cut all four sides of this slab, I just had to snap off that piece and then I came back later with the sander and just sanded off the little eighth inch piece that was left behind. Now, being that I had so much money already invested into this table project, I wanted to ensure that it was gonna stay flat over its lifetime. So to do that, we're gonna be adding C-channel. And if you don't know what C-channel is, it's brackets of metal that you insert into the bottom of the table that keep the table from cupping. We get all of our C-channel from the company Bidwell Wood and Iron located in California. They are a great company with amazing customer service and we've been extremely happy ever since we started using their C-channel. If you guys are interested in getting any C-channel for your future table projects, I highly encourage you to check out the link in the description below and also use our discount code that will be listed next to that link. Now that all of our C-channels are ready to be installed in the bottom of the table, it's time to plan out our table legs. I'm using these X-style metal legs that I had a local welder fabricate for me. I think they fit this table very well with the black epoxy and the red cedar wood. 
So I decided to put the legs 12 inches in from the end of the table and then I'm going to use my router to route out a shallow channel so that the legs can sit into the bottom of the table. Now for the finish on the bottom of the table I decided to mix up some super clear tabletop epoxy and then using a paintbrush I just worked my way around making sure all surfaces on the bottom of the table were covered. Next it was time to secure our C-channel to the bottom of the table. So using a punch I made some marks and then I pre-drilled the holes and in previous builds, I've used threaded inserts to secure the C-channel, but today I'm just going to use wood screws. So I worked my way down the C-channel, inserting wood screws, making sure that they were nice and secure. After securing all the C-channels, it was time to move on to the table legs. In previous builds, I used threaded inserts to secure the table legs, but in this build, I'm just going to use the same wood screws that I used to secure the C-channel. I don't know if this was the best method to use, and maybe you guys have a different opinion. You can let me know in the comment section down below. So after I finished installing the other set of table legs, it is now time to flip the table over and figure out how we want to finish the top side. I started this table with the idea that I would be using the super clear tabletop epoxy to flood coat the top of this table. But as I started building it and throughout the process, I decided to try a different finishing method. After sanding the table one last time, I got it all set up to try a spray-on polycrylic finish. Now we don't have a lot of experience using spray-on finishes, but I've watched a lot of videos and I see that people get really good results. So I figured I would give it a shot, and worst case, if it turned out terrible, I would just sand it back down and then resort to flood coating it with the super clear epoxy. Now some of you out there watching this probably realized the mistake I made, which was deciding to spray this inside our shop. As you can see, I've got way too much air pressure coming through that spray gun, and this polycrylic is just going everywhere inside of our shop. It was getting so smoky that I quickly realized this was a bad idea. So after this first coat, we took it outside so that we can continue spraying multiple coats. Now, even though I did make that bad choice of spraying the table inside our shop, it is looking pretty awesome. So I lightly scuffed the surface and then came back and sprayed my second layer of polycrylic. Some of you professionals out there watching this are like, oh gosh, you moved from inside the shop to outside. That's an even worse idea. And you are correct. When I moved outside and decided to spray the second coat, what happened was a lot of bugs and dust and debris came and landed on the table messing up the finish. So now I've made two bad choices in a row and I've got to figure out how to fix this so that I can get the best finish possible on this expensive table. So the idea I came up with was moving the table into what was going to be our future retail store. Since the walls weren't up yet and it was still in the process of being built, I figured it would be okay to spray this table inside here and fill this whole room with the polycrylic overspray. In the end, I think I added a total of seven or eight layers of this polycrylic to the table, making sure I scuffed the surface in between every single layer, and it actually turned out pretty awesome. So we finally finished spraying, and here is what the end results look like. As you can see, that polycrylic is leaving a nice sheen to the surface of this table, but it's a not an overbearing glossy sheen like it would have been if I had flood coated it with this tabletop epoxy. I am really liking the way that that polycrylic finished this table though, but I would like to hear what you guys think about it. In the comment section down below, let me know how you guys would have finished this table. Would you have gone the same route and sprayed on a finish like I did? Or maybe you would have done something different like flood coat it, or even applied a oil based finish or something like Rubio Monocoat. I would love to hear what you guys think or what you would have done, so let me know in the comment section below this video. I would like to take a second and apologize for some of the video quality in this video. I am the full-time cameraman here at Triple L Rustic Design, so when I am the one actually doing the work inside of a video, it's hard to get good camera angles and good quality shots. So a lot of this video was filmed on a GoPro and a cell phone, but I hope it's still good enough quality that you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully were able to learn something by the way it all came together. If you guys are interested in any of the products that were used in this video, check the link in the description below. We absolutely love the Super Clear products and we've been having great results with them ever since we started using it. We actually sell the Super Clear epoxy on our website, so if you are interested in ordering some, you can either order it directly from us or order it from Super Clear using our discount code, which will be in the description below this video. 
That's going to wrap it up for today's video though. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do us a favor and press that like button, subscribe to the channel, or even send this video to your friends so that they can check it out as well. We appreciate you guys and all your support on our channel and all of our videos, and we will see you on the next one.